Doc and I are going to review the Ultimates number five this week, my personal favorite comic book in the entire industry, not because it's good, but because it's so bad I can't quit it. We've got Dennis Camp and Juan Gary on this bad boy. And once again, Ultimates number five did not disappoint. Dennis Camp should be embarrassed that he wrote most of the dialogue. And honestly, Juan Gary should be embarrassed at how many times he just did the exact same scene over and over and over again in this fucking book. I think this is the first time you and I have talked about the Ultimates, but it's certainly not it the is. first time I've talked about the Ultimates. And we did get some some clarification on this new version of Hawkeye, Native American Hawkeye, because the original Hawkeye decided to turn down Iron Twink's offer to join the Ultimates. And then a Native American character grabbed it, and now he's the Hawkeye. But it turns out, because he's a hero, he needs to be an eco-terrorist and is literally going out there destroying factories, polluting the air, and like probably killing a lot of people. Well, they made sure to talk about the fact that he's shutting down the plants before he destroys them. That's Figure still got to be putting a lot of carbon emissions <laughs> in the air, but oh, the character yeah. does have the right pronouns. They, they. Yes. Yeah, they're they, them, because they are two spirit holy current year ism bullshit batman i'm glad that you finally get to experience this with me here doc and we open up and we always get some sort of stupidity whether it be the ultimate mutations on gamma island midas and he's the world's greatest capitalist or we get dr doom talking about his negative zone when he gets depressed and this week we get iron twink or twinkie tony whatever you want to call him and he's explaining to Steve Rogers, Captain America, that we might have made a mistake. The Native American character that has grabbed the Hawkeye battle armaments that apparently Iron Twink just left there for anyone to grab might not have a good rating on the Heroometer. In fact, yeah. it might end up on the villain side of the Heroometer. You don't go on a hero's journey. You don't learn all of the the things that you need to in order to rise to the equation. No, no, no. It's just something that some fruity little tweenager wearing a, a an iron costume can get to quantify from, I don't know, looking at you. I do love his illustrations of Twinkie Tony because he does have a little five head going. And if he raised his forehead up another two inches, he would be bordering on being the leader. That's how big his fucking head would be. All we're doing is Teen Tony again from pre-Onslaught. Can we just have Onslaught show up and kill all of these characters now and leave just, I don't know, Ultimate Spider-Man? Instead, um, we're going to get prematurely balding 16-year-old Tony wearing a lame version of the Silver Centurion armor that looks like he's wearing Rom the Space Knight as fucking armor. And it looks like they're about to, I don't know, make out with each other the entire time. Captain America needs to go and intercede on behalf of the Ultimates and get the Hawkeye armaments back because this dude is literally an eco-terrorist. He's going out there and blowing stuff up associated with Roxxon. As soon as Captain America showed up, you get exactly what you wanted. Of course... He's going to start talking down to him because he's white. He's like, this is cowboys and Indians. I remember the movies. I watched the movies when I was dead. You're a cowboy. And Cap's like, I I'm actually not a cowboy. I'm, I'm a captain. Yeah. He's like, fuck it. I'm going to try and shoot you anyway. The idea behind the arrows for Hawkeye is pretty cool to where basically it's like a 3D printer and he can like print off whatever arrowhead he wants back there. And that's why he has somebody. So I thought that part was cool. But everything else about this in the confrontation and all the weird cowboys and Indians talk was an enormous turn off. You would think that, you know, Tony, if Tony was going to basically hand some dude that didn't have a memory, a maker bot that he could wear around with him that has AI that can make basically anything he needs. You think Tony might have, I don't know, hung around long enough to, uh, to see whether or not he'd keep it or you I don't would think know there would be protocols in place to keep positive security on the dangerous weapons that according yeah. to Tony, you can destroy an entire army with single handedly because the arrows are that powerful. You would think that there would be, I don't know, an instant recall button for Tony. Like, Hey, if this guy abandons this shit, I need some fucking low Jack on it. And I need, you know what? Uh, it's already established that that is in there because at one point, Spider-Man is unmasked against his will because Tony has specifically programmed in there that he can control the suit 
even if Peter Parker wearing the suit doesn't want him to. But of course, they forgot about that already. And instead, they need to send Captain America out to go and collect it. It feels like it's Iron Swing's problem, not Cap's problem. It feels like it really is. So Cap shows up, and of course, it's the virtuous, the, the what is it, the noble savage trope. You're playing this Cowboys versus Indians and trying to turn it on its head. Nah, bitch, you're just as tropey as everyone else. When I talked about, you know, they're coming out with the Native American Hawkeye, I was like, hey, I'm for this. I like Native American characters. Could be really cool. I was like, please don't just make him depressed on the res. Guess what? He's depressed on the res, and that's why he's out here, because they flood the plains, they dig up our sacred grounds, they foul the water, they build these refineries and pipelines like the Great Black Snake. Our stories say we'll, we'll end everything. They take the whole world hostage, and when we protest, they kill us or they throw us in jail. It's the same fucking story over and over and over again. And I, I hate to break this to you, not everyone goes to the exact same life that Dennis Camp imagines that they do. This is the only Native American experience. Terrible white people destroying Native stuff and... They need to have revenge. Nothing here is even remotely interesting. It's the same arguments that everyone else has made for the last fucking 20 years. Anti-colonial bullshit. Come up with something new. Absolutely. And as you're going through this, it's literally like 15 pages straight of not them like negotiating or having conversations. It's literally 15 pages straight of Hawkeye trying to murder Captain America. He uses acid arrows. He uses freeze arrows. He uses razor arrows. He uses bomb arrows. He even used something called the hunter killer arrow. Absolutely trying to murder Captain America the entire time. Cap never made one aggressive move at Hawkeye, but this guy is a fucking terrorist. So his only modus operandi is to destroy stuff, blow it up and murder people. And that's what he does literally for 15 pages straight. It's just him trying to murder him while he's guilting him because he's a white character. At no point here is Hawkeye even remotely reasonable. A costumed hero showed up. I must try to murder him and then lecture him and berate him about the fact that he's white. I'm not. The only thing that Cap does is at one point he knocks down one of the arrows. He breaks a couple of them. At one point, he finally just gets sick of this shit. And bonks him in the head with his shield. That's but it was a love tap. He wasn't even trying to hurt him. So that he could redirect his attention to the, all the amassing mercenaries coming to fucking kill them. Yeah, because what they're doing has caused uh, the rocks and security personnel to realize who they are. Now, if you're Captain America and you've literally been attempted to be murdered by, I would say, at least 25 different arrowheads at this point, all lethal that have been shot at him. You might just, I don't know, bamp yourself back to fucking the ultimate headquarters and be like, yeah, that didn't work out. This guy tried to kill me, and then he came up against this enormous private army. That's not what happens. In fact, Cap's like, we're ready to do a team-up, even though you're a, a fucking terrorist and a, an attempted murderer at the minimum, and I'm assuming that he's killed a lot of people because he was so fucking comfortable doing it. He tells him after they're done, and they've literally defeated this entire army, no, I was never going to take the armaments back. I wasn't going to take the Hawkeye stuff back. I just wanted to be sure before I told Iron Lad because I knew that you were a hero before I even arrived because you're Native American and you have to be a hero. You couldn't be the bad guy, even though all evidence points to the fact that you certainly are a bad guy because you're a terrorist and a murderer. He's from a marginalized group, so therefore all of his evil actions are completely justified and therefore okay, and you need to revise your hero index your hero thermometer thing to decide. Oh, yeah, they should be recruiting fucking Nature Girl right now. Yeah. She should be scoring 100 on the hero index because going out there and murdering people because you don't like what's happening to the environment means that you're a hero now. Yeah, according to Steve Rogers, as long as you're from a margarine group, you're allowed to do everything and anything. It doesn't matter how many people you murder. doesn't matter how much property you destroy. doesn't matter how many people you... You put in the hospital, you know, how much collateral damage happens. If you're a margarine person, you get to do whatever you want. I hate everything about this comic book. Every man, woman, and child that's murdered at the hands of Hawkeyes or Hawkeyes, whatever the character wants to call himself, 
as he's doing his eco terrorism, all that blood is now on Captain America's hands, but also Iron Twink's hands as well, because he didn't provide proper oversight to Captain America and realize you actually have to bring the criminal element in. At no point was there any sort of recognition they were doing anything wrong. Like Captain America just said, keep on, keep it on, brother. So this entire comic was a waste of time other than Captain America showing up to validate marginalized criminal diversity checkbox Hawkeye. Well, Captain America validated eco-terrorism, so that makes it okay. That was your first experience with the Ultimates. I'm loving this series. And, you know, this is definitely amongst my favorite dumbass things that Dennis Camp has done. You know, the Hero Index. Please keep that around. It's almost as good as Medichlorians at this point. And uh, this is the series that keeps on giving, and I'll never give it up. Me, personally, I'm going to give this comic book because the art definitely took a step down this week. Not that it's been great before, but it definitely was especially bad uh, this particular week. The story didn't make sense. There was no hero in there. The actions of Captain America made no sense whatsoever. We did get lectured by one of the characters there. So I'm going to give this one like a 1.5 out of 5, 3 out of 10, absolute failure, and I love it. I will never stop reading this comic book. I am going to give this four Sarah Brunstads out of five. You had all of the things that she would like in a comic book, possibly trans, noble savage, lecturing a white guy. Eco-terrorism is okay. Any behavior is acceptable as long as you are from a not white, not straight, not male group. So yeah, this is four Sarah Brunstads out of five. Um, If I'm going to go with stars, I'm giving it a half a star out of five, one out of 10. Not a very good comic book. No, this is fucking abysmal. I was so angry when I read it. Then we started talking about it, and then me and you talked about it now. If I wanted to write an Avengers book that made fun of Marvel and all their current tropes, I would write this book word for word. Actually, you say that. It could be a great parody of the common things now. Like, it's the, hey, I'm going to write a book that makes fun of, quote unquote, I hate using the term, but woke comics, because it's so over the top that it feels like parody and a joke. Yes. I'm telling you. That's why I love it. I wish I would have sent it. There was somebody, I can't remember who, but they did a video on that that G- Gamma Island deal. I want to keep saying Gamora Island, but it's Gamma Island. And those, and it was like going and like, this is so heartfelt. And I really, it really touched me with the, the person <laughs> whose nerves end up where they, they're they always in pain. And I'm like, talking seriously about this book then becomes a parody of a real talk. And oh, you, yeah. can't, you can't, and I, I got to find it. I was laughing. I'm like, oh my God, like out loud laughing just how ridiculous this guy was like man it really hit me it made me i was like two days later i was still thinking about those poor mutants what they did to them i'm like really Uh, that's what you're thinking of i was thinking of it i was thinking of me and you laughing at diaper neck that the diaper neck is the one that crab claws are the best (laughs) you got the nerve now that's the thing when you get this this and i guess even at one point too man i picked up this arrow and quiver because my nickname is hawkeye that's my name and like really that's your name hawkeye oh you white people you i'm sorry, just i wish that this was live action and you just went with straight up like you am white people who like just go full over the top <laughs> fucking ridiculous at, at one point i did see him rocks on they ended up where a thing blew up and there was an indian crying on the side of the road because there was garbage there it's so over the dude, fuck this this guy is he's a genius <laughs> so I was also making fun of a few weeks ago, the latest Fantastic Four, where oh, yeah, yeah. Johnny Storm bangs an earthworm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. somebody is like, you just don't get it, do you? This is like what it was like uh, for for um, yeah. black men dating white women, you know, in the 30s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's what this is representing. I was like, yeah, yeah, Johnny Storm with this fire fucking handlebar mustache fucking a worm. It's nothing like yeah. anything. <laughs> like, yeah, this is the thing. I don't need allegory or, you know, that sort of thing about the, the nonsense. Like, I, if you're reading something, you're like, man, that fucking that worm. And it really brings back memories of back uh, before the civil rights movement when you could add like, it's what? Like, this is what I want to tell the guy. It's like, my wife is not a white woman. Yeah, Both yeah. of my brothers are not married to white women. They were married to black women. Yeah. I know exactly what they're trying to get at. Mm-hmm. But it's so stupid that you can't take it seriously. No. And they're like, oh, you're just a fucking hater. You would have been, you would have loved it in the deep south. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, God. Yeah. I, I would have said, 
Actually, you're right. In the deep south, if I went and saw some guy fucking a centipede, I'd probably be fucking yeah. really pissed off. Like <laughs> the, the thing about this deal, too, is like I know that you catch your son banging the centipede, yeah. he gets a beating. Yeah, he does. He gets the switch. You go Adrian Peterson on that asshole. You end up where when this stuff goes on, I, I understand like even that and that Fantastic Four, it's trying to play the game of when, you know, Stanley and, and Jack Kirby, they're doing their stuff and they can't really come out and say things. So they, they made it subtle. And yet, it, lo and behold, they still had a story that told, so people loved it. And then when you got older, you're like, oh, shit, maybe this was about that. And also very general so that you can kind of tie it into just about any group that yes. you might end up being. So it, it's done as in a universal way. There is no way that Stanley's like, hey, Jack, I got this idea. Johnny Storm's fucking a centipede. Jack would be like, what the fuck? He probably beat the shit out of me. He's got that cigar, puts it out in Stanley's. I did not fight on, on exactly. foreign soil. So you, you could be that, man. That's fucking everything. Every, every, everything. Understand? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my office. I fought Nazis for this bullshit. I ain't controlling <laughs> no centipede fucking. Get out of here, Stan. That's why. And then at that point, Jack Kirby invented the Marvel method. He's like, I'm fucking drawing this first. You fucking write in the things. I'm not letting you do it, Stan. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that's exactly. so great. Uh, that's what you need. But no, the, the people with this idea of, oh, my God, like, I want to I love little subtle things and, and the idea. But I, I also love comics and I love enjoying them and I love fun. And that's why I read it. Yeah. If you're going to slip a message in, you make it subtle. This Ultimates book might as well just have on the front the Ultimates white shame returns. And then Cap, like, he's got his hands up. What the fuck? Because he just shows up. He's like. I, I thought Nazis. You he's Jack Kirby now. Hey, listen there. <laughs> That'd be great. He doesn't know the thing and he just gets fully racist without realizing it. Listen here, Kim Asabi. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. He's like, oh, go fucking take that. And then at the end, I wanted him to say, You didn't want me to be in, but now you do. You're kind of an Indian giver. We're like, oh, what the fuck? And they all go away laughing. That's what I need. You need more full out racism in this with this nonsense. Uh, because it's not heavy handed enough. I do want to say thank you very much to Doc for reviewing the Ultimates number five, the comic book that keeps on giving. If you like the complete unedited version of this review, you do have to go to Think Myrtle Patreon. The Doc Unfiltered podcast will have this as well as our entire conversation about the backlash against Nick Lowe lauding the latest issue of ASM. Lots of fun to be had there. And of course, you'll get the Q&A and a bunch of other goodies on the Patreon on the Doc is right here. Hope to see you there. There's a link in the video description.